Hey, hello there everyone, how are you? I wanted to come on here today and talk a little bit about hip pain that everybody seems to be dealing with. I hear a lot about hip pain and sciatica all the time. Now, earlier this week, at the very beginning of the week, I came on and told you that I was gonna be talking about this. But before I get into that, I'd love to know how is everybody doing with their food mood journal? Um, did it go well? Did you learn anything um, about yourself by filling that out? I'd love to hear how that went. So, getting to the hip pain and the um, sciatica pain that I was here been talking about. Now, a lot of times people say, well, I want to do stretches because if I stretch, I'm going to feel better. And that's true. Yes, you do need to stretch. But you need to do more than just stretch if you're going to alleviate the pain and make sure that it's not going to come back. Or have a routine is something that you can do over and over again to keep your hips healthy. So there's a couple of things going on. Um, it could be that there are imbalances going on in your muscle. So say you're, if we sit a lot, right, your hip flexors tend to get tight. Hip flexors um, cross over the hip and all the way down into the leg. Matter of fact, your quadriceps are actually one of the largest hip flexors in there. So that plays a role. If you're sitting all the time, that can be on very tight. And... Also, if you're sitting, the glutes and hamstrings can come over stretched and lengthened. So we need to take care of those imbalances that are happening. Also, in your outer hip can become very tight as well. Or there are muscles that are not activating properly when there's an imbalance happening. Some of these larger muscles aren't activating properly so that your movements become um, free and without pain. And your body starts compensating, right? all different muscles set taking over the job of what other muscles are supposed to be doing and it's a recipe for disaster. So what I want to go through is a three-step process that you want to do for any pain. So right now we're going to talk about hip, but at other times we'll talk about neck, shoulder, back, the core, knees, ankles. This applies to everything. So I'm just going to give you a few because I think if you have a lot of different exercises to do, it can really get overwhelming. And I want to keep this as simple as possible. So there's three steps to this. There is first, making sure you're getting to the root of the problem and rele releasing that tightness in the muscles, releasing those knots. And that comes with foam rolling. But instead of using a foam roller today, I'm going to use a tennis ball. Um, because it, why, what I want you to do using this tennis ball, it'll help to really dive deep and get deep into those knots and release them. A foam roller, you can definitely use a foam roller, it just won't go as deep. So try to use a tennis ball. Some people use like harder balls than this, but you can really feel it even with a tennis ball. And you can, the smaller the ball, the um, more intense it's going to be. So if the tennis ball hurts too much, use a larger ball like let me grab this one this is something that you can buy it's a, it's a foam roller ball and this it has a obviously a larger area it's not going to be quite as intense it won't hurt as much but for today's demonstration i'm just going to show this after you do the foam rolling and this is the order you should do it in. first you want to release those knots next i'm going to show you a couple of stretches but not the type of stretch that you probably used to i'm not going to show you the stretch where i'm just going to stretch your hamstrings and hold rather i'm going to be doing a um, like an active stretch so this is going to be a movement going through full range of motion so this is helping to mobilize this mobilize the hip then after mobilizing you want to start activating those muscles that should be working that could maybe not be working because they've gotten lazy and they've gotten overstretched so I'm going to be doing something for your gluteus medius, which is if you put your hands on your hip like this, but where your thumb hits, that's where the gluteus medius is. We're going to activate that. And then the gluteus maximus, the large muscle right in the back that you're sitting on all the time, or most of us are sitting on all the time, myself included. All right, so I'm going to give you a couple for each of those. So first, for the foam rolling part, the first one is a piriformis. You've probably heard about this one a lot. So this is more like in the, the back pocket of your jeans, right? If you put your hands in your pocket, that's where the piriformis is going to be. So put that ball on the floor, and you're going to put it right where that back pocket might be. Let me back up just a little bit. All right, and you're just gonna let your weight come down on that. And I'm gonna extend my leg out. So it's right in there where the piriformis is, 
And you can just bring the weight down there, move it around a little bit until you can feel a spot. Like right now, I get a spot right there. I can, I can feel a little bit more pain in that spot, so that's where I need it. And you can do things just by lifting your leg up and down, bending the knee in, extending it out, or even bending it, bringing that knee up and lowering it. I can really feel it that way. I kind of like that one. Everybody's going to be a little bit different in what works best for them. I kind of like this position best. And extending out. And you don't have to do this for very long. 30 seconds is plenty of time. You don't need to do any longer than that. The key is it's not how long you do it in one time. It's doing it daily. Get a little a short three-minute routine that you can do each day. After you do one area, then to the next area from there, we're going to go to the hip flexor, which is the quadricep. Now, the quadricep is four different quadriceps. Let me just cancel the sound ringing. There's four different quadriceps. And the rectus femoris, excuse me, one second. All these things are popping up on my computer and I can't see. The um, rectus femoris, right in the middle, crosses up over the hip. So I'm going to be placing the ball right here in the middle of the thigh. So I'm going to put that down on the floor so you can see. And I'm going to lie down on top of that ball. All right, and you want the weight of that leg right on there. And again, move it around, find a sensitive spot where you need it. And you can do things like bending the leg in, stretch that in, extend it out and flexing, contracting. Just move that around a little bit that way. And again, 30 seconds is plenty of time. Just hold that there. If you are on a foam roller, I would suggest taking one foot and crossing it over the other so it brings more weight down on that one leg. All right, next, what you're going to do is, oh, something's flashing up on the screen that distracted me. I didn't know what that was. So after that, then we're going to go to the gluteus medius, which is up in that hip. So for this one, you're going to be able to see the ball at all on this one. This is going to be up in the hip. I'm going to put the ball right behind the hip bone, extend my leg out, and I'm rolling onto my side a little bit here, sort of back side. Can you tell that? It's kind of hard to see. So here it is under here. It's right behind my hip bone. And again, finding that one spot that you can feel the pain in here. You don't want to be cutting circulation off or having shooting pains going down your leg or anything, but just... Um, just rock it there for again for about 30 seconds, all right? And that's up in the gluteus medius. Once you do that, now let's get into some, mo some mobilization movement. All right, you foam roll 30 seconds, each one of those three positions on each side. And also when you're having some pains, it could be imbalances not just in the muscle, like the front and back, your extensions, your flexors, it could be an imbalance from one side to the other. You could find one side is tighter than the other, one side stronger or weaker than the other. So that's why working one side at a time is really important. All right, so done with that part. For some mobilization movement, there's one that's really good, rocking the hip back and forth. Just bring your knee across, your ankle, sorry, across the knee, and you're just going to call tick tock. You're just going to bring that knee down to one side and over to the other. Just rocking those hips back and forth, mobilizing the hips. You're going to rock it back and forth one side and then to the other. Right? Bringing it over to one side. And I can definitely feel one side tighter than the other. When I come over to this side, I can definitely tell that there's a difference in the sides. So watch for that. Be aware of differences so you can see how things are working better. It's much tighter for me to bring this knee down than it is for my other knee. It falls down a lot easier. Okay, so that's TikTok. The next one is a standing one, and it's a static lunge. So what you're going to do, there's a couple of different, I, I would love to see you do it with your back foot raised. Because when your back foot is raised, it gives you a much bigger, much bigger range of motion and more of a stretch. So what you're going to do is just going to come down, bring that knee down to the floor. It's going to be a huge stretch right through the quadricep and back up again. And it's just down and up. So it's stretching, 
but we're actively stretching, working mobility. If that's too hard for you, it's hard for you to balance that way, then go ahead and do it on the floor. Keep just do it this way. If that is too hard for you, don't come all the way down. You can even put a block, like a yoga block or something, and just come part way down and back up again. Tap down, back up. I like to bring it all the way down to the floor. You can even come down here and raise your arm up for a reach to get into there even deeper and back up again. And reach and back up. So those are your mobilization stretches. Now we want to activate those muscles. And I'm going to show you two ways to do that. And the first one, I'm going to use the stability ball because it's going to give me a bigger range of motion. You can do this on the floor. The range of motion is just going to be very short. You can do this lying over a bench with your feet off the end of the bench. I like to do it on a ball. So what you're going to do is you're going to lie down over the ball. You're going to bring your hands to the front. And it's just a hip extension. You're bringing the leg up, contracting the glute and back down again. Now you want to make sure you're really activating the glute muscle, not the hamstring. Try to keep the hamstring relaxed and focus on the glute. You don't want to come up and arch the back. We're not trying to go too high. As a matter of fact, if you contract that glute, it's almost going to stop the leg from going too high. You might have 15, 20 repetitions on one side and then go to the other side. If you can't feel that at all, you can also put some ankle weights on. But the idea here is to get the muscle used to working and activating. Lift and lower. And as you do these isolation moves and get these muscles to work, you're going to find that your lunges, your squats are going to feel a lot better as well. And every day, you're not going to have as much pain as so the second activation muscle is for the gluteus medius. So that one I showed you when you put your hands on your hip where your thumb is, right where that thumb lands, that's where the gluteus medius is. And this tends to be one that is definitely underactive in a lot of people. So the way to activate that and to work it, you can also do this over the ball. Just kneel next to the ball like, like a side plank. So we're going to use the ball for some support. And you can tell you're activating if you keep that hand on the hip. I want you to turn the toe down. Because I don't want you to feel the quadricep working. That's not what we're looking for. I want that to be more relaxed. Almost roll the hip forward just a little bit. Keep that toe down. And as you lift, try think of lifting up and slightly to the back. And that's going to activate. You should feel the muscle right back in here contracting. Now, if I were on the floor, I wouldn't get this nice stretch in the beginning part of it. All right, that just gives you more range of motion. And that's why you have to do that. gluteus medius. And again, do this every single day. All right? You can take five minutes in the morning and do these. And I guarantee you, in a cup, and I was having some hip pain. It didn't take very long for me to alleviate that pain by doing this. Maybe two or three weeks, two or three days, and it already started to alleviate the pain. And then if you continue to do this on a regular basis, you're going to keep that pain at bay. And it's going to do a lot more for your hips to keep them healthy throughout the years. All right, so go back and watch this. If you need to, write down notes if you need to. You want to make sure that you are foam rolling, mobile stretching, active stretching, and then isolating those muscles so you can activate and strengthen those muscles. Let me see the questions that were here. Um, who is it? Hey, Alan, how are you? Um, 30 seconds of exercise, one hour of trying to get back up on my feet. Ah, no, 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 not for you, Alan. Um, 30 seconds is for the foam rolling, right? 30 seconds on the foam roller. You don't, studies have shown that longer than 30 seconds doesn't do a whole lot. It's not about how long you do it at that one time. It's that consistency over time. That's what the important thing is, all right? So that was for hips. Um, and remember, if you have hips that are balanced, and you have some mobility in those hips and some strength, it's going to alleviate not just pain in your hips, it's that sciatica pain that goes down your leg. It can help with knee pain because a lot of times your pain in your knee is directly related to problems and imbalances in your hip. And the same with your low back. Low back pain most often is, a, is caused by lack of hip mobility. 
All right, so let's get those hips moving and active and strong. All right, that is it. I will be back here next week. Uh, the challenge for next, I can't remember the challenges for next week. Well, you will see it on Sunday. And I will be back in here to talk about that. And I will pick another area of the body to work on. If there's something that you specifically would like, let me know. And I will be sure to cover that. All right, I will see you all soon. Have an absolutely wonderful weekend.